Hello YouTube, Edward here. Welcome to another episode of my Oracle BI video tutorial, this time dedicated to the ordinary table. Tables might seem a simple way to visualize report results, but I consider them one of the most valuable visualizations we have, even if I do not intend to use them actually. For instance, when I'm trying to make a graph, the table is the only view that shows me all data, as it is, raw from the system, not aggregated, like a pie chart. If I have an issue with the pie chart, the table is the only way to see what the data is behind the pie chart. It is what I use to debug other visualizations. Tables also come in handy when I'm doing report maintenance on a report created by somebody else. When trying to understand the report created by somebody else, the table is the only way to see the data that was selected for the rest of the report. And therefore, this episode is all about making a basic table look good and about conditional formatting, but we'll talk about that at the end. To show you all about tables, let me build an example report that can be used to gather insight on open opportunities per country and per industry. For this, as usual, I'll be using the Sales CRM Customer Overview Subject Area. There we go. As dimensions for the report, I will be using Customer Country. From industry, I'll be using industry name. And as facts, I will be using under pipeline the number of open opportunities and the open opportunity revenue. Last thing to do is make sure I only have open opportunities. For this, I'll be using the sales status. I only want to see open opportunities, so I add a filter that says only show opportunities where the status code equals open. And that's it, the basic report. Let's have a quick look at the results before we start formatting this table. There we go. A list of open opportunities aggregated per country and per industry. When creating a report with Oracle BI, there's probably a million different ways to format a report. There is column properties, container properties, view properties, and more to go through. So let's have a look at them one by one. In any case, there's never an excuse not to use them and not make a table look good. Column properties are properties that apply to, surprise, surprise, columns. We'll be able to format the individual columns or the header of a column, apply colors, those kind of things. Let's have a look at how that is done. For this, I have to go back to criteria. For each of the columns, I have this option, column properties. And here I can start formatting my columns. For instance, I can give them a background color. I can change the font size, change the font color. Basically what I can do, change the alignment. I can really make them look ridiculous. Let's have a look. There we go. And to make things easy, I have the option to copy my formatting. Here I can copy the format and apply it to another column. There we go. Create 
great. But we can do, of course, much more. Let me undo what we just did and have a look at a few other options. Voila. Let's check out what's happening here. All these industries are all linked to China. But since China is appearing multiple times, it gets suppressed just to structure the data, I guess. If you don't like it, you can undo it. It's part of formatting too. For this, I go back to criteria, under column properties, go into the second tab for column format, and I can choose to suppress or to repeat values if they're identical. Notice how I also here can change the label of the column. I even can go and format the label itself. Let's have a look at the results. My China values are no longer suppressed. They are repeated. My column is renamed to country and the font was set to red. Again, before we continue, let me undo this quickly. Notice how this revenue column is actually not showing the values as currencies, just as plain numbers. Let me show you how you can change this. Indeed, I go back to criteria. For the fourth column, I choose column properties. And this time I'm going to have a look at data format. You'll see that the default is just to show the data as a number. Let me override this and show the data as a currency. And the currency symbol is the user preferred currency. And there you go proper currency formatting for the open opportunity revenue. There are of course many more column properties, but I think you understood how they work. So let me continue with container properties. Container properties are about the area around, in this case, the table. For instance, I could set the background area of the table to red. So everything around the table is red now, except the table itself. I must admit, I hardly ever use these. I just wanted to add them in to be complete. View properties is something I use much more often, especially with tables. Let me show you why. You see how I only see 25 records, but there's more. I can go to the next 25 and so on. Well, not in this case. I can change the way that looks and behaves under view properties. The page controls, the options to go back and forth can be changed location. I can set them to the top. And it could indicate I only want to see 10 at a time. Now I can scroll down by 10. Another very nice option is the option to enable alternate styling, whereby, let me choose a nice color, something flashy, red again, whereby rows alternate in background color in this case so that i can clearly see which opportunity revenue data belongs to what country or what industry there is of course much more to change about this table but for this we have to go into edit mode on this view let me ignore steps for the moment let me increase this a bit. Let's have a look at what we can do here. As you can see, I can design my table at the bottom, and I have the ability to preview my changes on top. 
before I click done to save my changes. What I can do here, for instance, is exclude the country column from my table. And that country is gone. Or I can add country to sections. And then look what happens. I have a little industry table for China and a little industry table for Ireland and so on. One for every country. And even one for the ones without country. Another option is to add country as a table prompt. Here the end user has a choice to choose the country for which he wants to see the industry information. And each of these, of course, has options to further specify how this needs to be visualized. Furthermore, also from here, we can go and change for each of the remaining columns the column properties, as we did earlier in criteria. And we can further specify how we want to format the heading and the values, as we did earlier also from criteria. I'll continue now but please take some time and try them all out. Let's have a look at how we can add totals to a table. Basic table totals. I want to have some totals at the bottom of my table. Here they are. And I of course have the option to format this the way I want it. For instance, I want the label to say industry total the font color in white and the background color in red I will copy this formatting and apply to the values also and there you go my grand total per country formatted as I wanted it but there is other ways. I could, for instance, want to have totals at the prompt level. Let me add some table prompt totals. And I chose before. Notice how actually nothing changed. What this does, though, is in my list of countries where I can choose a country, I have an option all values on top, which I didn't have before. Now I see industry totals across all countries. And I have the option to show this little all values option at the bottom of the list of countries. In case I would be using sections again. I also here have the options to add totals. Remember what sections did? One little industry table per country. If I choose totals before, I get an all sections industry little table before all the little tables per country. The last thing to say about totals is that summarizing the values is not the only option we have. If I look at open opportunity revenue value and I click on this little icon, I have the option to change the aggregation rule. Let me choose instead of summarize, which is the default, average. And I can see that across industries, the average value is 1.5 million. For number of open opportunities, the maximum value for one industry was 10. I can change the aggregation rules. So far, all the formatting we were doing was unconditional. The font color was either red or it wasn't, but when it was red, it was always red. Let me show you how you can add conditional formatting, formatting under certain conditions only. For instance, let's highlight in red all opportunity values less than 100,000. For this, I go back to criteria. And on the open opportunity revenue, column. I choose column properties and then I use a fourth tab to go to conditional formatting. 
the first thing I have to do here is specify a condition. My condition is if the open opportunity revenue value is less than a hundred thousand, then the font color has to go red. Let's check it out. Great. Immediately my eye is drawn for these red values. And that's exactly what conditional formatting should be all about. It should help the end user in quickly finding what's right or wrong when looking at the report. I can take this a step further though. Let's say I want for each of these industry to know whether or not there is at least three open opportunities for them. I don't need to see the exact values. I just need to see whether or not there is three open opportunities. Let's apply some conditional formatting to the number of open opportunities column. Go back to criteria. And under open opportunities, I choose column properties, conditional formatting. What I'll do here is add a condition where I say if the number of open opportunities is less than three, then use a little red ball to indicate something is wrong. And in case the number of open opportunities is greater or equal than three, let's use the green ball. I immediately now see where we have not enough or enough open opportunities. Actually, the value becomes irrelevant. Let's remove that. And let's also center the balls in the middle of the column, just to make it look a bit better. Go back to criteria. Go back to the number of open opportunities column. Go into column properties. On the first tab, I set the horizontal alignment to center. And when I go back to conditional formatting, I have the options not to change the condition by clicking the icon, but I will be changing the formatting again because I didn't want to see the value, just the red or green ball. Click on the icon, I can change the formatting, I go back to the image, and here's a very nifty little feature. I can choose whether or not the ball needs to be at the left or the right of the value or just should hide the value. And that's exactly what I want. The preview shows me straight away what's going to happen. The red ball will be shown, and for the green ball, I still have the value. Let's remove that too. Let's check out the results. And there we go. And to summarize this episode, tables are really valuable when designing reports. Not just to show report results, but also in debugging situations or when doing maintenance on the reports that were created by somebody else. Furthermore, with all the formatting options we have available, tables should never look boring. And don't forget to use conditional formatting. It helps the end user to understand the report results. I hope you liked it. I hope to see you soon for another episode. Ciao.